Namaste and welcome to the KYG Shrine. In the last video, you saw how privileged we were to receive these sacred symbols, the sacred deities, the sacred idols, if you will, um, into KYG. Now, the elephant in the room is the question that comes as to why these? Why are these symbols so important? Why are these idols uh, so important in, in the path of yoga, in the path of self-actualization where the goddess is in me and God is everywhere? Then why all this, right? This is the path towards that final state. What we are in is the path to the final state of experience, the direct experience. And therefore, these act as symbols. These act as the grounding energies that help us stay focused in the path. This is the state of Kaivalya. This is how I understand creation and so on. We get the symbolism of it. Once that is clear, once the symbol is clear, once the emblem is clear, if you will, then the path becomes more clearer. And when the path is clear, then staying the path becomes easier. Then we develop devotion in that path, we develop determination, we develop a sense of enthusiasm in that path. In today's vlog, I want to share with you just one part of this KYG shrine, which is the main, the core, that is the Kaivalya Lingam. From the last video, I did get a, a few emails and questions as to the setup. Shouldn't this be on the side and what is this Lingam and so on. So let me explain this. Kaivalya Linga. This is the Kaivalya Linga. Kaivalya is a state of oneness. The ultimate experience is the experience of oneness. That is, everything is within me, I am in everything. The I, not the I as Sundar, but I as the Paramatma. And therefore, at this point, let us call that I, He. He is the one. But that He is actually the only I, right? So, let us not get confused there. So, Kaivalya is that state. Now that is represented by this. In all of creation, the unmanifest energy contains three primordial energies with which we relate to creation, which, with which we re relate to our everyday life. That is the, the energy of creativity. Where do our thoughts come from? What is the source of beginning of anything? If this is manifested today in KYG Shrine, if there's a television in your room, if there's a sofa in your room, how did that manifest in your room? It manifested first somewhere in the inner space. That inner space of creativity where a feeling emerges, an instinct emerges, a thought emerges from the depths of your own inner silence, that is the space of Brahma, the creative energy. The power of creation comes from that space and that space is ruled by an energy that we call Brahma. So in the Kaivalya Lingam, the base of the Kaivalya Lingam, which is four in, uh, in its shape, this base is the Brahma. The Brahma has four uh, basic directions here, as you see. And I'll, I'll try and put a picture there, I, I'm sure it becomes more clearer. Brahma energy is best understood in terms of a square. A square is a strong foundation, forms a strong foundation. So in all the yantras, if you see, in all the diagrams, if you see, in all the photographs that you have in your room, if you see, there is something about a square or a rectangle, whatever, but the idea is the four. The number four, which forms a square or a rectangle, gives a sense of a base, a foundation, a, a structure, right? And therefore, the number four. So creativity emerges from that base, from that foundation of four. We'll come to that in a bit, if we get time to, in, this, in this vlog. We'll come to that again. Why four? What does that four mean? But for now, hold on to that thought. Creativity emerges from the Brahma base and therefore Brahma is the base of the Kaivalya Lingam. On top of that, there is another part of the Kaivalya Lingam and that is called, this represents rather, the space of activity. 
Now, from this inner space, I, I get a desire, a thought that I should have a glass of water because I am thirsty, right? As an example. So now Brahma has given me that thought, drink a water. Then what do I do? I get up from my sofa or get up from where I am sitting, go towards the tap, open the tap or the water filter, fill the glass. Now all that is activity. Activity is carrying out this thought. This thought is slowly beginning to manifest. And that energy, that space, that energy that gives me that power to act, power to speak, power to walk, power to run, all my senses begin to function. The entire maintenance of that creative energy, the nurturing of that creative energy, the shaping of that creative energy towards this fulfillment is the inner space of Vishnu, Mahavishnu. All activities are dedicated to that energy that we call Mahavishnu. Vishnu is omnipresent. Brahma is Brahma means limitless. Vishnu means omnipresent. So this Vishnu is omnipresent in this what we think and what we determine as creation. Whatever it is, uh, in whatever dimensions you think of, this is the Vishnu energy. And that activity of ours towards fulfilling that creative energy that has sprouted from within, that thought which has come from within, that desire that has come from within, all the activities that, are, that we engage in, that creation engages in, are determined by eight boundaries. Now, before I go further, know that the ultimate spirit is boundaryless, limitless. But this is the path to understanding that limitless, right? So this, this is why we need to have this, this uh, understanding and after that we, we go beyond it. So Brahma is four, Vishnu gives us eight boundaries. Eight boundaries. What those eight are, we will come to in a little bit. But within those eight boundaries lie all the elements and lie all the time and space, beginning and ending, good and bad and all of that is by this. So all of activity is dedicated to this powerful energy of Vishnu because you see even when we do the water Abhisheka, we, we pour water on the Lingam, we will come to all those rituals part in a separate vlog but when we do that, Vishnu is the one who takes it and he passes it on to the infinite. That's why this is facing north. North represents the Sahasrara in us. In this earth, as a one dimension, the north represents Kailasha. Kailasha is where Shiva is supposed to be. In other words, the cosmic connection is connected to the north. In other words, this is south in our body, this is north. So everything that we do has to be pointed to the north. Because this is where Dakshinamurti, the Supreme Guru sits. This is where the Supreme Consciousness is, right? And I use these terms like Dakshinamurti or Shiva just for us to have a, a handle on what we are talking about. Then comes what happens. So I had the desire for water. I walked towards the water filter and then took a glass. Then what happens? What is the third part in this equation? The third part is fulfillment. I drink the glass of water. So you have a desire that sprouted, an activity that helps working towards the fulfillment of that desire and the last is the fulfillment of that desire. This Rudra energy, Rudra, Brahma, Vishnu and Rudra, the Rudra energy signifies the fulfillment of that creation and activity. So every thought of ours cannot just only be creative, it doesn't mean anything. It, there has to be an activity that spurs, that energizes that thought and then if the activity is properly nurtured and powered by the Vishnu energy, then it finds fulfillment in the Rudra energy. Now the Rudra energy has 16 portions to this. This is very obvious in the Lingam. The four is not obvious, it is hidden in the Brahma. The eight is not so obvious, you can see it from the top of the Lingam, you can see the eight here. But the sixteen is obvious, the fulfillment is obvious. This is the Rudra energy. What this four is, what the eight is, what the sixteen is, we will come to that. But this is the sixteen colors of the Rudra. Why is Rudra on top? Why is Vishnu here? Why is Brahma here? This is why. Now, 
creativity, why is Brahma hidden? Why couldn't Brahma be on top? Isn't that the most important? Because without Brahma, creation doesn't happen. Yes, it is true. But the source of your thought, do you know where it comes from? The source of our intentions, the bhava, if you will. I'm speaking to you. I'm making these vlogs and we are offering it in KYG. What is the intention behind these things? Do you know what are my intentions? You can't see it. Do I know my intentions? I have to really go within and inspect why am I doing this, right? As an example, I'm giving this as an example. So the intentions, the bhava or the emotion behind a feeling, the source of all these thoughts, the intuitive energy, the guidance that comes, that is so deep and hidden within the core of the universe, within our own core. That's why Brahma is hidden in the depths of the Kaivalya Linga. It is not to demean Brahma and say he is down and somebody is up. Now this down and up, black and white, rich and poor are all ridiculous d distinctions that we have brought upon ourselves because that's how we have defined our world today, unfortunately. But in the world of the spirit, there is nothing like that. The idea is a symbolism. Okay, Down is as good and as powerful as the up. The hidden is far more powerful than that which is seen. Right? And so Brahma is hidden at the bottom because he is that he, he represents that intuitive creative energy within us, which is rarely seen. We cannot even put our fingers uh, towards it unless we go into deep into meditation. So Brahma. Vishnu is also partially hidden. You can see him from the top, the eight corners, but you really can't see what is the Vishnu energy. The, you only see the external structure. Vishnu is activity. Again, there are so many activities that the effort is hardly known. Now, for example, as I'm doing this vlog, there is an effort of a camera set up here. I had to call in uh, Dinesh, who, whom I just found, who is going to do our uh, camera work when I'm here, who's helping me out. He's got this particular angle that he covers me in. So there is a lot of efforts that goes in. Then I have to time it in such a way before the sun comes and starts beating on my bald patch. <laughs> uh, we have to time it. So there's a lot of effort that goes in. Now this effort is not visible to you. It is kind of partially visible in the sense you know, okay, this guy has set up this camera. He's got two cameras now. Somebody is moving it or there is a lighting here and there. So you have a partial view of the activity the effort that goes behind what is visible, but it's not always visible. And that effort is very powerful. The more invisible the effort is, the more humble the effort is, the more dedicated and pure the effort is, the more focused the effort is, the greater the fulfillment. Therefore, Vishnu energy is that energy. And therefore, Vishnu is also hidden inside the Linga. Now, in traditional temples, this Brahma base is actually buried under the ground. You don't even see this Brahma base. But I, we didn't have a provision to bury it and I don't want to bury that. I want this always to remind me as much as it will remind you what is this? Why are there are three sections to a Lingam? And therefore, I didn't want it buried. I wanted him to, I wanted him to design it in this way. So, traditionally, you will see only this part and this part of the Lingam. You don't see the Brahma because that is inside the ground. So, Vishnu is again partially hidden. So what is it that we see? We see the fulfillment. What you're seeing is this video in this vlog. You don't, you didn't see the effort. You don't, you don't see the effort that goes behind it. You certainly cannot understand the intentions behind doing this video. For example, this is not seen. This is kind of understood, but this is what you see: the end product, the fulfilled product. So after this, this involves camera setup, this involves me talking right now, this involves editing, all of that goes the Vishnu energy. So I invoke that Vishnu energy, I pray to him, Om Namo Narayana, I pray to him to help me guide through all that. What you see is the fulfilled product that is now on YouTube or wherever it is that we are hosting it. So this is the fulfillment. This is fully seen, but everybody sees. If you're... If, you're, if you are practicing a, a rigorous spiritual life, then what you see is a reflection of your practice. If I'm able to maintain equanimity in my everyday life, it is a result of a deep spiritual practice. If I am healthy and my mind is able to meditate deeply, that is all visible part. It is a result 
of a lot of effort that goes in here and deep within that what is it that is driving what is my what is my motivation comes from the brahma energy what are the effort that goes towards a rigorous penance rigorous austere life a disciplined life all that is part of vishnu energy some of it is seen some of it is not so seen but what you see here is the effect of a disciplined body and this kaivalya lingam is within you within me it's in every aspect of this creation everything has the creative sattvic energy the active energy the rajasic energy the energy that motivates us um, and pushes us into action like krishna told arjuna act pick up the arrow and and fight the war so this is that vishnu energy fulfillment shiva is in meditation because he is fulfilled he is happy everything comes to an end tamas tamasic means it's not like sattva is better and tamas is bad or something like that in terms of gunas and qualities that is just one small little angle to this but the pure creative energies of the universe the sattva the rajas tamas tamas means fulfillment that desire that found birth finally found fulfillment and therefore shiva sits in the graveyard in other words that activity has come to an end and therefore it has reached a state of auspiciousness my life when it is finished will come to an end and shiva sits on me in other words my life has found its fulfillment our journey is the ultimate fulfillment of self actualization oneness and so on and therefore it is these energies but there is so much to share and i'm just share, allowing the divine to guide me into these words i want to chronicle these for my own sake for my own diaries if you will but at at the same time i wanted also to share these uh, precious moments these precious thoughts with you all so that you all understand and we all understand together what is kaivalya yoga gurukulam all about what is the kaivalya lingam all about what is going to guide me in in the future steps of how do we worship this emblem why do we worship this emblem how do we keep on keep this this idea very alive in the depths of our heart and the more it is alive within us then the more it is that we will stay in the path towards self actualization towards the state of kaivalya so thus you have the kaivalya lingam which has the brahma energy the sattva energy the maha vishnu energy which is the rajasic energy and the energy of rudra which is complete fulfillment and therefore we appease rudra we say calm down and and, and let that fulfillment manifest in the way we want it and therefore there is rudra abhishekam and so on it's such a beautiful practice let us my dear brothers sisters friends let us not get lost into the dogmatic part of it the ritualistic part of it oh this is how it should be done this is now how it should be done this is how it should be chanted not this way and that way and we get so lost in the do's and don'ts of the rituals that we forget the very essence of why this is being done this should be the dearest and the nearest to you because that is our true nature the oneness of that and when we understand this oneness and begin to recognize it in all parts of creation then we begin to live in oneness and then our thoughts would indeed become one then we automatically experience unity in our family in our community in our nations when there is disunity in an organization in a community know that it stems from the disunity in the individual we are not able to understand this kaivalya within us and that is so important and therefore in this vlog let me end with this basic introduction to the kaivalya lingam as always thank you for watching stay blessed stay inspired thank you for being part of this journey thank you for all your blessings and wishes when i shared the video of the deities that came into the kyg thank you again namaste